spring, I've spent a ton of time training. I've done a couple gravel events and I even did a UCI mountain bike race. But now I leave all of that behind to focus solely on crit racing with the Texas Roadhouse cycling team. And what better way to kick things off at one of the biggest crit races in the country, Tulsa Tough, baby. Going into the weekend, I didn't feel that nervous. I was feeling pretty good about my fitness, and the team directors of Texas Roadhouse hadn't put that much pressure on us. Tomorrow on that field, it's do or die. Win or cry. There's only four of us racing this weekend, and none of us really expect to win or do anything all that crazy. And so with this being my first pro caliber event and my first time ever racing Tulsa, it definitely made the weekend a lot more enjoyable. Friday's race was the Blue Dome Crit, and this was the flattest, most turniest course of all three days, which meant it suit the sprinters of the group. The course had a lot of quick back-to-back -back turns and only two long straightaways where you can make significant position changes. However, this wasn't my strategy. If you, if you tried to gain positions on these long straightaways, you ended up having to put your nose in the wind and burn a ton of watts just to move up 10 or 15 positions. <laughs> And I saw people do this every lap, and it made me wonder, are they really losing that many spots every single lap through the turns? Rather than burn a ton of energy like these guys, I decided to make up spots through the turns, which there were a lot of. One of the best ways to do this is to make a late pass right before the turn. This is risky if you don't find a spot to slot into or if you get pinched on the inside of the turn and have to grab your brakes. But most of the time, it was a pretty effortless way to make up a few spots. And if you do this consistently throughout every lap, you could gain a quite a few spots. Because there were so many turns and the pace was so high, there wasn't that much action in the race. I mean, Legion basically did a 40 minute lead out train. And there was definitely a sense of seniority around the Legion squad. It was kind of weird. It was as if no other team wanted to pass their train. I don't know if this was tactical by other teams trying to conserve energy, or if Legion was just that much stronger than every single team out there kind of hard to believe that's true. With about eight laps to go, I found myself not far behind this Legion train in the top 20. And I thought to myself, man, all I've got to do is ride wheels to the finish. Unfortunately, it wasn't that simple. The pace got a lot quicker and the riders got a lot more aggressive. And after having to slam on my brakes to avoid a near crash, I went from the top 20 to mid pack and I was pretty spooked. I ended up rolling in for a 33rd finish, and Texas Roadhouse's top finisher was Aaron Beebe, finishing 21st. Day two's course was a little bit more in our favor, or at least so we thought. There was a little bit more climbing, and it was kind of the reverse of Friday's race. You did most of the turns on the uphill portion of the course, and then you did one long, quick straightaway into the final turn, which was another long straightaway into the finish. One of the most annoying parts of the whole weekend was the amount of time we spent in the start corral. I mean, I thought start position only mattered for cyclocross. We spent over an hour in the corral every day. And while we were in the corral during Saturday's race, I noticed that my stomach didn't feel so good, like more than just pre-race nerves. I don't feel very good. So I asked the Texas Roadhouse guys how they felt, and they said that they were suffering the same upset stomach problems as I was. So it turns out that we probably all had bad burritos for lunch, which wasn't good right before a pro caliber crypt. Within the first five laps of the race, I hadn't moved up at all, and I didn't feel any better. Around lap six, I suffered a front puncture on the long downhill, which was good because then I could coast right into neutral support. And this also was good because it gave my stomach a second to catch up. Thank you. 
So after I got the wheel fixed, I jumped back in the race and was determined to move up. As the race played out, I noticed that most riders were using the long downhill portion of the course to recover, so I took this chance to make up as many spots as possible with minimal energy spent. I ended up getting to the top 20 at about halfway through the race. However, at this point I realized that I wasn't going to be able to maintain this effort for the entire 35 remaining minutes, so I decided to drift back a little bit and save some energy. However, my legs never really came around and I eventually ended up suffering another puncture with 9 laps to go. This time it was a rear flat and it was through turn 1. We were going pretty fast and I didn't have time to raise my hand to let the riders behind me know I had a flat, so I ended up unclipping my foot to make sure I didn't crash through the turn and so that the riders would know that I was suffering from a bike issue. Once I came to a stop, I decided to roll backwards on the course, but I was a little afraid that I'd get disqualified, so then I jumped off the course through a walkway and walked all the way to neutral support where I did get a new wheel. And I was back in the race with seven laps to go. This was cutting it close because free laps end with six to go. So with a new shot to get to the front of the race, I accelerated as hard as I could. However, it was short lived because the cassette and my shifting didn't match up and every time I got to about the fifth cog, I couldn't keep pedaling. This eventually meant that I had to watch the last five laps of the race from the sidelines. <laughs> Sunday was the big showdown. This was definitely the day that Texas Roadhouse was looking forward to the most because we thought the course suited our strengths the best. And I had been dying to race Crybaby Hill since I was a junior, and I finally got my chance today. With a 4.30 p.m. start time, it felt like it was the hottest of all three days, which also meant that ice socks were a must. I went through two ice socks just waiting in the corral. Finding my way to the front of the race wasn't that hard. I knew that it was a hot day and that any attacks would just be brought back by Legion who once again controlled the entire race and set a blistering fast pace. With this in mind, I decided to conserve my energy for the majority of the race and just sit in the pack. This course was a much easier to move up and stay at the front. The long finishing stretch was a good opportunity to recover and then you could carry a ton of momentum into the climb and find gaps as you climbed. I ended up staying in the big chain ring for the entire race. And I also felt that I could have gone a little bit harder on the climb most of the laps, but eventually my heart rate continued to increase and increase as the heat started to play its effect.
While I had felt pretty comfortable throughout most of the race, that changed really quickly. A Texas Roadhouse struggling a little bit in the back. With about 10 laps to go, I felt as if the pace had increased significantly, and this was also when I saw 196 beats per minute on the climb. I had completely blown and couldn't hang with the group any longer. Tanner Ward not giving up. Hugo Scala Jr. being able to respond to it. Colin Strickland regretting the decision of sitting up, letting a little bit of a gap open up. Seeing that Legion was right there, he thought it was all over. And then seeing the two guys go again as Tanner Ward and Scala, Hugo Scala Jr. are not willing to give in. So Kevin Muller via Cliff Bar. Just one lap later, with eight laps to go, the officials decided to pull me, which meant that I was watching the final laps of the race from the sidelines once again. However, I decided to keep rolling the course to the top of the hill, and along the way, I grabbed a $6 hand up, which means the weekend wasn't a total wash. Legion once again dominated the race, no one even competing with them in the last five laps of the race. They ended up finishing first and second place for the third day in a row. Trying to be able to wake up, take a win. DCC holding it up right now. It's going to come down to the final sprint. Out of the saddle, Corey Williams taking off like a rocket. Trying to be able to take back Tyler Williams. Tyler Williams sitting up, taking the win. Tyler Williams won. Corey Williams. I guess they are that much stronger than everybody else. I like to learn from racing, so I've got three big takeaways from this weekend. Number one, stay hydrated. While I do feel like I did a pretty good job at this overall, I do think I could have improved it a little bit throughout the day as we waited to race in the evenings. Another big thing here is that we should have talked to our team directors and had them in the feed zone for Sunday's race because it felt as if we were the only team not getting cold water from the feed zone, and I think this would have played a big part in the race. Number two, remain calm. Stuff is gonna happen. You're going to get flat tires. There's going to be crashes. You're going to have to take neutral support at times, and the calmer you are, the easier it is for them to do their jobs. I don't know how I got to be this way, but neutral support said that I was the calmest person they had seen all day. It just doesn't make much sense to freak out, so don't freak out. You're freaking out. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Number three, learn from racing. This weekend wasn't all that I wanted but I didn't go home moping and crying about it. Sometimes I think racers get a little too upset about race results. We need to take a big step back and examine our personal goals. And we can't just assume that one bad weekend of racing is going to totally derail us from those personal goals. We need to look at this opportunity and grow from it. What can I change to get better? What improvements can I do with my training to get better? Sometimes getting your teeth kicked in is exactly what we need to get the motivation inspired inside of us to keep going. That's, that's motivation. That's all I've got for this video. So if you liked it and want to see more educational cycling videos, hit the subscribe button and go check out all the other videos I've posted. Until next time, y'all stay rad.